Dr. Zoltan Kodai, the eminent composer and conductor, during a rare United States appearance, was at the University of California, Santa Barbara, on August 2nd and 3rd, 1966, to preside over a conference of music educators from the Western states. Born in 1882, Dr. Kodai began his music career when he and fellow student Bela Bartok rebelled against the academism of the Deutsche Kucherkamp at the Budapest Conservatory. In 1906, they published 20 Hungarian folk songs, the result of an intensive study of their native Hungarian music. The first American performance of Dr. Kodai's choral work, Misa Brevis in Tempera Valley, was during his tour of the United States in 1946-47, when, on January 26, 1947, he conducted the chancel choir of the National Presbyterian Church, Washington, D.C. Portions of the Misa Brevis heard on this program are from the chancel choir's performance on the fourth anniversary of the occasion. Dr. Kodai is interviewed by Dr. Erno Daniel, professor of music at the University of California, Santa Barbara, and director of the Santa Barbara Symphony. Dr. Kodai is a very great composer, unquestionably, in the history of, of contemporary music. How did you become interested and how did you become involved as a composer in the course of music education in the primary schools as a part of the general education? <clears throat> because I detected more and more that we, these so-called highbrow musicians, are quite alone in the world. We have no public. We make music for each other. And so I thought that since music it's not a, a toy for a very few selected people, but music is a spiritual food for everybody. So I thought how, how we could enlarge the public of, of the serious music, which is called highbrow music, but I think that is only the true music that is called highbrow. So I, my attention was all, almost directed to the primary schools, and I detected that nothing happens there which would be able to introduce general people in, in music understanding. And I thought on the education of ancient Greeks, where music was uh, one of the chief subject of general education, uh, which uh, lived the fourth in the Middle Ages or the universities, the Septem Artes Liberales. Music yes. was also an important part of general education, which in modern times disappeared entirely. Yes. So I, I studied more and more what to make, what could we make, make to improve that and, and to make more people accessible to good music. Actually, when do you begin? the education in music for, for the child? This question was posed me some 20 years ago in Paris in a UNESCO conference. Then I answered the music education of the child should begin nine months before his birth. Well, that's early enough. <laughs> but now, a few months ago, was again a conference in Paris. Then I, I told, I changed my opinion and today I mean it should be begin nine months before the before the birth of the mother. Uh, what material do you feel that the best is the best for introducing the child to music? Now we must begin with the material what the child has already in itself. Each child ha has learned on in his uh, family surrounding or kindergarten, some little melodies. And what is more important, each child likes to improvise melodies yes. from himself, sometimes very primitive and very simple melodies, uh, almost repeating short phrases several times and so on. 
The teacher must grasp this material and to try to develop it slowly in, in broader forms. But what we can call the mother tongue of a child that is built from this, these fragments of music and, and melodies, what he hears and what he, he incorporated in himself and partly composed from himself because each child is composing. Yes. Also, this must be ordered and to start from this and broaden it slowly in bigger forms and then this very precociously with new material which is conformed to it and so slowly in many years every child can be conducted as far to be able to understand even Beethoven's music. Yes. You have, we know that you have written and under your guidance books have been written for each grade of the school instruction. Yes, now I am surprised to find uh, that this general interest for that in, in foreign countries because in my mind was nothing else as to improve in Hungary the situation. So it was made expressly for Hungarian surroundings and if the system would be adapted in foreign countries, each country must add his own special yes. motivic and, and musical uh, background. Yes. Which can anyway combine it with it. The chief thing is a very slow but consequent progress. Yes. Beginning with the most simple features and surprisingly quickly they arrived to a two or three part singing children because a feeling of harmony is developed very quickly if somebody takes the trouble to to deal with the chief hindrance is that the general schools give too f too few time for that too little time yes what would be your what is your idea how much time the school should spend with music instruction in the since, general curriculum? Since the school had to develop homogeneous and balanced men and not specialists, I mean not that a special music teaching should be introduced in general schools, but as many as a, a complete man needs. A complete man without music does not exist for me. A, a man without music is incomplete. Yes. So we introduced just with a hard fight with the pedagogic administration in hundred and about hundred schools a daily singing lesson. It means not a whole hour, fifty minutes or so, but a little music every day that is important for the child as well as he had to eat every day because you cannot nourish well a child if you give him only once a week something to eat so also mm -hmm. music must be eaten every day a little bit less and is this everyday portion of, of an allotted time or does this portion of time remain the same in higher grades or it's going to be uh, longer and, and more? Let's say in the first grade, if the child receives every day. Every day, 20, 30 minutes. And how would that work in the second, third, fourth grade, in successive grades? Later with a growing child, it can be a little longer uh, a regular 40 or 50 minute lesson and then choral rehearsals because uh, grown up children from 10th year on are singing in chorus and yes and with that they, they learn many good literature from older time and newer time 
And I would emphasize that it's not mean to, to make from them professional musicians, just, just to, to complete men. The professional teaching must be in the beginning exactly the same, because no professional music can, can be built from nothing. He has, must have also, a, he must sing before, because so many great pianists declared that nobody should play piano if she cannot sing. There is even one, the famous rival of Liszt, he wrote that he, he taught five years with an Italian singing teacher. The professional music begins chiefly with instrument playing. Now in those schools, instruments are not obligatory, but after eight or nine years, most, most children mm -hmm. want it to play. And then in a few years, it, it, will be, it will be seen which one would be able to be a professional musician, because yes. these manual ability are very different, <clears throat> and the professional musicians should go out from the same background. Uh, this is a very important point, that music should be a part of the general education. <clears throat> yes. And regardless of someone who might be later on developing into a professional yes. musician, every child should receive the same kind of basic education in music. That is. Then when do you think that the professional education in music and the general education in music do separate? In what age um, in general? Now with instrument players, about the 10 years, it is already to see which one can be and should be become a professional. Because his manual and, and bodily and all, all gifts are then clear, clearly to see. And then after after 14, they may go over to a special music school to, yes. to be paid to a professional. <clears throat> but as to 14, <clears throat> I mean, everybody should be on the same level in music. Yes. Now, what material do you do use or you advocate using and it, for the beginning, it's the best <clears throat> that natural singing of the child, <clears throat> what he learned from his, from his uh, surrounding and what he added from his own <clears throat> improvising and composing ability. The next step would be the folk songs. Each, each country has his own folk songs, which are very, gives a very rich material to, to <clears throat> the most different moods and styles. Later on, if the, the native folk song is exhausted, can be gone over to folk songs of other peoples. Of other countries. Other countries. First the neighbor countries, and later on also far distant countries, because as many, many great musicians said already, the best mean to know people is his folk song. <clears throat> and then gradually the big music is introduced. Very <clears throat> many easy pieces of Haydn and Mozart are very much accessible to every child <clears throat> without a special musical training. The big classics, <clears throat> the great classics are always fairly related to the folk song of their own country. So Haydn to Austrian. Yes. Beethoven to German. Yes. And so from the folk song background, the jump is very easy to the great classical music. Whereas the so-called light music gives, gives ne never a trans transition to the big classic music. That it is, is entirely separated. Yes. They, they can, 
never together in the same channel. The Greek classic is a natural continuation of folk song. Now when it comes to the contemporary composer, how do you see his role in creating up-to-date contemporary material for the purpose which we are discussing? Now he must, at first he must adapt himself to the language of the children. To speak the children, you must know their language. And he can only slowly and very cautiously introduce his own personality uh, without remaining to the child an incomprehensible stranger. Yes. He must first speak the language of the, the children, and slowly he can taught them his own language later. But anyway, contemporary music can follow only after the, big, the great classics, yes. not before, as some people means. To let out entirely the great classics and to begin with contemporary music is quite a foolish idea. The natural development must be followed also in this. Being an primarily interested in the instrumental end of it, for instance, Bartók's Microcosmos for the instrumental beginner. <clears throat> now he has a very many different styles in the Microcosmos. That use exclusively the Microcosmos is the danger that the child can no, no more in understand Haydn and Mozart. Yes. I think microcosmos must go later or at least parallel with, with the, with the other theory. music, yes. Anyway, microcosmos is very good to know other people's style because there are always a lot of, of foreign people's style yes. consciously imitated and introduced. But then also it's better to take the original means. Since the child, as it a common place, must be, must go over the development of the race. So for the child, the best is the style and motive of very primitive people. Lastly, I found a collection of I know songs, and I We'll make from them a little series of uh, two-part songs for the very beginners, because I see that this I know motives from the pentatonic or, or even only with three or four notes melodic, they are just the style that suits the best the child, the child of every country, because man is finally a unique type, and, and the, the many national difference makes makes no, how to say, in, in spite of national differences, there is a unity in man, yes. always. Basically so that, the same. Basically the same. And so that, especially in the beginning, every child is a primitive man, so to say. Yes. And the primitive music is the best for them. And slowly he can develop to, to his national speciality, and later on to know the national uh, uh, specialities of other nations. Now, how does the teacher's training, training the, the professional teacher, can serve, uh, serve this purpose the best. What should a teacher know? How should a teacher be trained that he might be able to, to go through, follow through with this kind of education in schools? That is the big question in every country. With us, 
Some 50 years ago, people began to think that a teacher of music in schools must have nevertheless some musical knowledge. And we introduced in our Academy of Music a course of six months for people they already worked in, in schools, but had very, very different background. musical knowledges. During the last 50 years, these uh, six months are grown up to five years. No, we, no, we give now to the would-be teachers a course of five years after they had already a musical instruction for at least 10 years. With 18 years, they, c they can enter in this course, which gives them a diploma for, of equal rank of a violinist or pianist or whatever instrument. They must be good musicians. They must have an uh, overlook the all the classical and modern music. And besides, they must know the technique and the psychology of how to manage children and so on. That is the crucial question in every country to teach. I heard also in America it is a big gap between seriously built musicians and the teachers in schools. The former are looking despising to the others, which are perhaps very mediocre musicians, but they should bring brought up to, to a higher degree to have as as nobody would allow to to teach mathematics in in primary schools to a, a bad mathematician he cannot good reckon. So it should not be allowed to to teach music somebody he is not a thoroughly built musician. As I understand then then you believe very much that even in the primary grades, the very first grade, already a specialized music teacher should teach music. Yes, that would be an ideal situation, but I understand very well that it's, in the time being, it is not to reach, but we must strive for it. Yes. And As you said that once about the composer, that a composer should not feel that when he's writing for the small, it is an easier task than writing music for big, sophisticated audiences, but just the opposite. Certainly, because is he writing <coughs> for adult people or for by the way, it is also a question which, which very few composers did ask themselves, for whom I am writing? Because most composers are writing for themselves or for a few, for a few friends, musicians. If you will write for the child, you must learn before the, the language of the child. Who are the, in your judgment, some of the contemporary composers who are doing this well? It's hard to, to say. Now, you see, it happened that some composer never thought, never thought to write but purpose for children. And nevertheless, many pieces of Haydn are very well suited for children. Why? Because he conserved in himself the soul of a child as to the, yes. the he remained limited a child. age. Yes. So I can imagine that maybe existing some composer, good composer, he can never write for a child because he he lost his, the childlike part of his soul. That's very beautifully said. And, and the, only those composers should try to write for children. 
then you feel that every great artist should have had the yes. child in himself. She did also. So Beethoven's many themes are, Beethoven itself was, as to the last day, a, a big child in many, mm -hmm. many things. And even the greatest are the best for the child. Yes. There is a beautiful saying, the Scotchman Fletcher said, as we talked about it uh, yesterday, that let me, let me write the songs of a nation and I do not care who makes its laws. Yes. That proves the tremendous influence of music over the general development of a child and of a nation. And of a nation, of adult men too. But no adult men are able to understand music if they did not learn it in childhood. Childhood. Therefore, it's a big difficulty all over the world now to find listeners for music. Many music is produced and also good music, but no listeners, to, to few listeners, not enough listeners. Just as a listener must be educated and where only in the general schools. It must be a curriculum of the, of the general curriculum, must be a part of the music. Now this might be a, a question which is, would be hard to answer, but how do you see the role of the university in developing and in helping to develop all these? No, in two directions. First of all, the university could philosophically and, and in generally, in any way, so, emphasize that music yes. is indispensable for general education. And on the other side, the universities, especially American universities, he has all music departments, could much contribute to the training to train the the future teachers of music in schools so there is a philosophical and a practical, and a practical. Side of it. and in both areas the university, the university can take could do very, leadership. Very much but this conference of course which starts tomorrow under your guidance and with you presiding will do just that we hope, to emphasize that the university is where the basic philosophy of all of these tenets should, should have a home, and at the same time, the university is the place where the practical means and ways are being instilled in the teachers to create music. Mm -hmm.